Welcome to The Payne's Creek Killings. This is a murder mystery, and it does something that I've never seen a game quite do before. The beginning of the game will kind of ex help explain that, so let's just jump into it. This game seeks to emulate, to a certain degree, the experience of a real-life investigation. There are neither helpful quest markers nor any form of hand-holding throughout the game. You have to search each location well, gather scattered hints and clues, read found contents carefully, and use your power of observation to proceed in the game. We recommend taking your own notes and making full use of the in-game camera. And then just something about making sure to save and stuff like that. And good luck. Hey, uh, Janet. So the Chief has entrusted you with my assignment, hey? I hope it didn't interfere with your weekend plans. Anyway, he uh, told me to call you and fill you in on it. You remember the murder that happened a few years back that was never solved? The one at Payne's Creek where the ex mayors wife was killed? Well, the property's being auctioned off soon, so we don't have much time to dig up anything that's relevant to the case. So see what you can find. Hopefully it'll be something worth publishing. Anyway, take care. I'll see you on Monday. Bye. Regarding who killed Vivian Roberts, August 3rd, 1999. In 1995, Vivian Roberts, a successful businesswoman and wife of an ex-mayor, was murdered outside her home. The case was never solved, and the killer never found. It was rumored that someone hired a private investigator to find out more about Vivian's death. Unfortunately, there was no news pertaining to the investigation. Last week, we received news that Payne's Creek will be auctioned off soon. We would like to revisit the case one last time and find out the following. Who killed Vivian Roberts? And what was the motive? And what was the murder weapon? Please submit your findings and a front page photograph for your story to be published. Don't forget to bring the camera. So if you didn't catch it at the beginning description there, what's so unique about this that I've never seen before is there's like no hand-holding at all. No quests. I, I'm not sure if there's even a right answer necessarily. I'm assuming there probably is a right answer, but like it is completely up to me when I feel like I've solved it and when to leave. I could right now just run over here and you get a prompt. You want to leave Payne's Creek now? The game will proceed to the ending. I could leave at any point. If at any point I think, okay, I think I found enough evidence to support whatever conclusion I've come to. I can do it, so it's just just lets you loose in a abandoned town. At least I think it's abandoned, I'm assuming there's nobody here. Since it's about to be auctioned off, it just leaves you to your own devices to try to figure out the mystery. That is so intriguing. And we have a camera to help us. Welcome to Payne's Creek, population zero. And we can view the pictures. So we can use this both just because it's kind of cool and also to collect evidence that we might need to reference later. Like, for example, I just played the very beginning so I know that there's a note here. Cemetery gate, padlock code 1131. Be good to take a picture of that. Can reference it later. One more thing, though, that's going to make me feel even more like a detective is that it mentions that it recommends taking your own notes. Unfortunately, there isn't any sort of a journal that you can actually write in in-game. So instead, I'm gonna take notes in an external program. So here's what I'm gonna do. I've set it up in my recording program so that I can just switch from the game to this. And I'm gonna use Google Keep, just like a browser-based note program. I've never used it before, but it seems like it'll do. And we can take notes. So hopefully I'll compile a pretty good case. I have no idea what I'm actually going to put in here. But uh, just to start, we can say, this is my first note. And can add a drawing. Where's, where's drawing? I think it's an extra. Add drawing. And we can put, like, a little smiley face. 
There we go. So, let's start being a detective. Sheriff's office. Oh, um, one more thing, by the way, that I've noticed. You notice the name of the game is The Pains Creek Killings. As in plural, multiple killings. And notice how the case notes, um... Uh, who killed Vivian Roberts? So it just mentions the one person. The one murder. The killer was never found. Only mentions Vivian. So the name of the game is plural, in suggesting multiple killings, but it seems we're only investigating one killing. Which makes me think, maybe we're going to find out that multiple people were killed? It does, after all, mention a private investigator that was rumored to be hired, and there was no news pertaining to their investigation, so I wonder if that investigator perhaps died while investigating it. Don't know. interactive light switches. It's a pretty good looking game. I played through just this very first section so I know there's a flashlight in here which will be very helpful. Let's grab it real quick. Does the toilet flush? No it doesn't. I'm very disappointed in you, game. Some light switches don't work. Find another way to see better in the dark. Oh, I guess that's your hint to grab a flashlight. Now why exactly the sheriff's office, with I'm assuming many important documents is just left unlocked, is a bit of a mystery. A bit strange, but I'll take it. Story of Tonti. Scott Brooks, Paines Creek Trinity Church's pastor's son, suspected for killing Vivian Roberts. Witness reported seeing a suspect fleeing from murder scene late night. Last night? Late night? The police have apprehended Scott Brooks yesterday afternoon. He was residing at the hunting cabin. According to a witness who wished to remain anonymous, he was coming home late on July 19th at around 11.50 p.m. when he saw Scott walking very quickly away from the Roberts mansion and heading in the southwest direction. Although Scott looked upset, the witness did not think of it unusual until a few days later when he came across the newspaper, art newspaper article on Vivian Roberts' murder. Feeling uneasy about the whole situation, he called the police. Shortly after the call was made, the police arrived at Scott's cabin and questioned about his whereabouts the night Vivian died. Scott said he did meet her that night, but he said he had nothing to do with her death. Scott was later brought down to the station for further questioning. A lot of good information in there. Specific times and dates, I'm sure that's going to be important, but at the moment I don't think I need to make any sort of a note of this stuff. And I believe you can reference it later in your journal. Yes. Desk key? And it doesn't automatically use items, so you gotta go into your inventory while aiming at the thing you want to use it on, and then press it. Old gate key. James Howard, Paints Creek Sheriff Department. Vivian Roberts murder case report. I just realized this phone number looks like a real phone number. It's not like 555. I wonder if it's 2 something. August 6th, 1995. This report is an update of what happened to Vivian Roberts. Scott Brooks, the only suspect of this murder case, was apprehended a few days after Vivian's body was found. According to our investigation, someone saw Scott at around 11.30pm near the woods north of the mansion. 
Two hunters were looking for more wood for their bonfire when they heard shouting. They witnessed Scott and Vivian arguing. However, they were too far to hear the content of the argument. Six months prior to Vivian's death, Scott was fired from work at the mansion. She cited Scott for tardy work and rebellious behavior. She also prohibited Scott from visiting the mansion and meeting Trisha, who by then has a close relationship with Scott. The police are currently investigating the case. Scott is their main suspect in Vivian's death. Hmm. Trisha. So it sounds like Scott had a relationship with Trisha. Romantic. Sounded like they were together. Now that I might want to make a note of. keep checking trash cans to see if there's like a crumbled up piece of paper in one of them. Hmm. What were the password for it could be? What if it's in here or somewhere later? Nevada County Sheriff's Department. Uh, regarding work relocation, Dear Sheriff James Howard, this letter is to inform you that you have been reassigned to Long Island starting May 14th, 1998. Due to the decreasing population of Paines Creek over the recent years, we have decided to delegate manpower to other, more needed places. Please report to our office before May 12th, 1998. So this place has been abandoned for a while. That was... The sheriff needed to be there by 1998, and now it's 1999. See, I'm just thinking. Four-digit password to get in here. Could it be in this room? It could also very well be anywhere else. Probably most likely at the house of the sheriff. I'm assuming we can go to their house and have a look around. Ah. I think it... Yeah. We can look at the map anytime. So we are here. Inns and suites. Postal service. There's the church that Scott was at. Or, well, Scott was the son of a pastor, right? Cemetery, we have the gate code to that. Mayor's Mansion. Community Hospital. I don't see any houses marked here. I suppose they wouldn't be, I, I guess. Is there just like public services and stuff? I'm not sure. I mean, surely there must be houses, right? Let's enter the town. You know, I should probably make a note of the fact that I need to find the password. Right? Yeah. To do find password or digit to sheriff's I'm not going to worry about spelling too much. To uh, Sheriff's Filing Cabinet. Let's give to-dos a color. Yeah. What the heck is this? It's just a, a dot. <laughs> Let's just delete that one.
Yeah, certainly. Plenty of houses along here. Wonder if I can enter them. Aha! Can sneak past there. Can I crouch under it? Oh, I can't. Looks like the houses are mostly boarded up. That one looks like it isn't. Can I check their mailbox? Ah, oh, I can't. Seems like I should be able to turn the power on. It looks so suggestive, but I can't. Can I break in the window? Nah, oh, dang. What kind of an investigative reporter am I? I feel nervous because I got to pick somewhere to start, right? But there's so many choices. Like, this isn't boarded over, is it? Unlocked? I, probably. It's probably going to load if I click on that. It's a cute little town. Check out these. Start with number two. Ah. Oh. Number eight. It's weird. The residents were smarter than the sheriff. They actually locked their place behind them. I'll eventually find the keys to them. Ooh, stuff in the other seat. I need the car keys. Is that a driver's license? Number one. Oh, this isn't a house. Uh, I think this is a hotel. Place has power. Good. Seriously, a good looking game. Old fashioned way to listen to music.
dart scoring. Get the feeling that's probably not important. Oh, it's a pamphlet. Be our guest. Enjoy your stay in Paints Creek and take a chance to explore the surroundings. Traverse up the slopes of Black Pine Mountains and take in the jaw-dropping views or take a hike on our trail towards Cherry Creek Lake. Spend the night at Anne's Courtyard Inn and Suites and enjoy the five-star room service it provides. There's more amazing secrets you can uncover here at Paints Creek. Yeah, I think that's where I am right now, the... Anne's Courtyard Inn and Suites. With the lack of city pollution, Paints Creek has been able to, to be kept well-maintained. There are vast trails to walk and sceneries to view and no area too far to explore. Moon Cafe. Acclaimed coffee has been known as one of the reasons people come to Paints Creek. If you haven't had one yet, we highly recommend you to visit and taste for yourself. Hunter's Trail. Another Paints Creek's pride is its hunting ground. You, however, will need to obtain a hunting license from our local sheriff. Wasn't the hunting cabin where Scott was found? Church, Sunday worship. Doesn't look too important. Stevie's Barbershop. Moon Cafe. Ah, oh, that makes me hungry. Fries. I want fries. Gone but not forgotten. Join us at our local church as we take this time to commemorate all the lives who were lost 20 years ago. What happened 20 years ago? Hmm. By the way, I think this game might have a supernatural bent to it. Might. I don't know. Testimonies from the relatives. As some of you know, some of the victims were working fathers who are, at this time, unable to provide for their family as of now. If any individual would like to make a contribution to the families who are affected by this incident, please contact Father Matthew. Okay, this deserves a note. What happened 20 years ago? The incident? Paints Creek Annual Fall Festival. Pumpkin carvings, etc., etc. Missing. Joshua Taylor. Missing 1989. 13 years old. Last seen on the playground. Last seen at Four Pebble Lane across the river on the playground. He was wearing his favorite blue jacket. He has a scar below his left eye. Does he? I don't see a scar. Hmm. Between the incident and this missing person, it's such a small town. There's definitely something going on here. Wow, well, there's gotta be some good stuff in the main office. Here's the key that you requested. Seven Black Pine Road, Paints Creek. Ah. So I've got the key to seven. I should probably note that, because I don't think the key itself says anything, right? Yeah. So I, I definitely need to note that, or I am going to get very confused later on. Creek Herald. 
Payne Street Community Hospital closes its doors after 60 years of service. Fund embezzlement suspected as key factor. Hmm. Payne's Creek Community Hospital, one of the leading one of the leading field in long term what? <laughs> the sentence doesn't make any sense. Uh, one of the leading in the field in long term rehabilitation for the elderly finally closes its doors after 60 years of service. Payne's Creek Community Hospital first opened its door in in 1936, serving as a humble abode for treating patients and provided boarding for those in need of prolonged treatment. Vivian Roberts, a successful businesswoman, saw the need to revamp the hospital in the early 70s. She founded the Roberts Relief Foundation with the main purpose to support the needs of the village of Paines Creek, starting with the hospital. By the early 80s, the population of the village has started to decline rapidly. Many young people who went to college did not return, and the number of seniors were qu was quickly rising. With the increased need to treat the elderly, pain... and then it ends. Ah, I can see who's staying at each place. Stephen Moss. Date out. Not recorded? That's bizarre. That's very bizarre. So who's Stephen Moss? Is that the same Steve that we read about? No, that was Scott, not Steve. Scott was the pastor's son. I'm going to make a note of this. Stephen Moss never left hotel? Don't know why I have another blank note. Tons of room keys. 204, 203, 202, but not 201, which is where Stephen Moss was staying and never left. That switch doesn't seem to do anything. I'm so excited to explore the hotel rooms. Let's go up, or actually, what's down here? They had a lot of wine. What's this light switch for? I guess these two lights that don't work. Okay. Let's check them out. This is 204. I mean, I'm assuming if they checked out, there's probably nothing left behind, right? <laughs> of course. Always a Bible in a hotel room. Nope, can't pick him up. Always got to check behind the door for something. The 
believe we have a key to 203 as well. Yep. realized I'm a horrible person. I'm leaving the lights on everywhere. I'm wasting so much power. Oh well. I mean, nobody lives here. Who's gonna get the bill? Ooh. Past due. Is that <laughs> 201? It's locked, right? Yeah. If they never left, do you think they're still in there? <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Just a rotting body? <laughs> no way. Oops. Dear Stephen Moss, thank you for your rent payment. As stated in your rental agreement, however, when rent payments are not received by that date, you must pay additional rent because of a late charge due or because you do not qualify for the rent discount. The required additional amount was not included in your payment and is therefore now due. Please pay $85 at once to bring your credit balance up to date and remove it from the delinquent list. This amount must be paid within seven days from the date of this notice. Rosalie something. I really want in there. I think that's it for this place. For now. Let's try a house. So we have the key for home number seven. Where is number seven? I don't know how they're ordered. I guess we should look. Eleven. Twelve. Eight. Two. Ten. Uh, maybe seven's over this way. Four, five, six. That's going in evens. Um, twenty six. Oh, my God, I'm so confused. <laughs> now we're into the twenties. Christ. Oh, this is the playground where that kid went missing. Or it was, that's when they were last spotted anyway. Children's play area.
Oh, this is a way better picture. I want some of the playground stuff in the shot. Eh, this is better. Oh, what's this way? Let me finish exploring this first. I can't go up the slide. Oh my god, are you supposed to be here? Because that tree does not look right from this close. I don't know, there's an invisible wall here. I don't think you're supposed to be here. Which is weird, because it looks like there's a pathway right there, right? Shouldn't go into the water, my equipment will get wet. Is this the hunting gammon, perhaps? What if the back door's open? Doesn't look like there's a way up there, though. Can't jump or anything, right? No. Guess I'll go back to trying to find house number seven. No, oh, there's number four. Ah, here's number seven. It's boarded over, though. Ah, uh, maybe there's a back entrance. Ah, that's the hunting area. That's not looking good for the back entrance idea. I wonder if at some point you maybe find a crowbar or something and you can get rid of these boards? I mean, if I have the key, surely I'm supposed to use it at some point. But there also could still be a back entrance. Let me go all the way around. I'm not sure how to get back there. Hmm.
End of the line. Oh, no. Where does this go? Oh, I think this is the hospital. Oh man, my performance is terrible here. <laughs> well, thank god the performance doesn't really matter in a game like this. Okay, well, I don't think I'm ready to go here just yet. Let me go back and see if I can find a way into Building 7. Yeah, seems like I just can't get there yet. Either I can't get my way to the back entrance, or I need to, like, pry off the boards from the front. So let's look for somewhere else to go. Let's try the post office. Dang. Almost everything's locked. I'm just gonna start trying doors, I guess. Ooh, what's this? Bookstore. Can't even try to open it. Oh, here's the cafe I heard about. Ah. this way. Everything's starting to blur together and look the same. Where have I been and where have I not been? It's a cute little town, but I'll be damned if it isn't homogenous. market. Yeah, this is supposed to be set in an American town, and I think I saw somebody comment on it on Steam that this sort of a phone booth does not exist in America, and yeah, I'm pretty sure it does not and has never. I think this is going to have to be the end of the game. Leave town. My report. Everything was locked. I feel like the homes are very, very, very unlikely to be unlocked. It's probably just businesses and stuff like that that would be open, possibly. Such as the church. Not even the church. Beautiful little spot. Oh, 
Oh, there's the cemetery. Right, I have the code for that, so that I can definitely enter. So, the note- who's the note left for? Someone else, obviously. Perhaps the person who was driving that car? Who wanted access to the cemetery and why, and are they still here? Don't see anyone. Let's see if we can find a bunch of people that died in the incident. I don't remember when it was exactly. I see a couple that died in 84. Raymond Brown and Christopher Burke. Ninety-seven. Eighty-four. I'm not seeing a bunch at one year, except maybe ninety-five, kinda. Hmm. Have a look at the leaves falling down. Hmm. Is it the rich person's grave that's locked? Try to find something, some place I can enter, and I'll bring you back when I find something. Oh yeah, so there are multiple house number sevens. Maybe the keys for this one. Oh, I can't use it. Yeah, I thought it said Pebble Lane. Nope, doesn't work. So here's a whole new place. Also, god awful performance. <laughs> it's okay, if we just walk backwards, we're fine. Uh, let's take a look at the map. Oh, this must be the ma- yeah, this is the mayor's mansion. That's where I went. So let's just look where I've tried. So I've been there, that place was open, postal service is locked, sheriff's outpost I entered, church is locked, photography place, I don't think I tried to enter that. Hospital, I've been to the area around it, but I didn't enter. Unlocked? There must be so many valuables in here, so much furniture, and my god. Alright, well I think we have found our huge location to explore. I mean, it's a freaking mansion. Well, I think I'll end it here. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we'll resume the investigation.